Oh, we've got something really cool to show you. We certainly have. Um, Iden, who fixed our engine when the turbo imploded on itself, we've said before he's a bit of a, a magical Whiz. mechanical whiz. Wednesday morning and we are inside bay at Keckover and we've got a basic plan. We've noticed that the wind starts to pick up to a sailable speed around about one o'clock in the afternoon. So we're going to be ready to go from around about one o'clock and head down to the anchorage at Smuggler's Cove or Smuggler's Inn. Hopefully there should be space there. A catamaran has just come in that was down there and they said there is, uh, it's not as busy as it has been, so hopefully we'll get some space down there. Let's hope the wind actually turns up on time. The afternoon wind is picking up, which is what we hoped would happen. We've got about 10 knots of true wind at the moment, so we might get 15 knots when we get outside into the other channel. And just before we leave this anchorage, we're going to do a couple of quick practice things. Two things that we've never done. Number one, now we have a freed up gypsy brake. We've never actually free the anchor before, so we're gonna do that with this huge piece of metal, courtesy of Iden. And the other thing we're gonna do is we're going to deploy our anchor marking buoy. And we've never done that before. We have left the anchorage, we are actually sailing, we have the head sail out, uh, it's acting more like a kite than a wing at the moment. We are doing three knots, sometimes it drops down to 2.7 knots, sometimes it goes as high as 3.5 knots, uh, we've got about 10 knots of wind thereabouts. Now um, so I'm just going to ask your thoughts on the free fall of the anchor and also deploying the uh, anchor marker boy. So, free fall of the anchor, what do you reckon? I reckon in an emergency it's a good option, um, but at the moment we've still got the potential for it to jump off the gypsy because I, I didn't have, you know, once I've once I've uh, released the brake, it really went fast and that when it goes fast it has a tendency to jump and getting the stick back into the hole to put the brake on was like, <laughs> um, so I think it would be good in an emergency and I'd like to practice again in shallow water a few times just to get the hang of it. Michelle, what is your thoughts on deploying the anchor marker boy? I think it's a good idea to have it going and the way we did it I think we make it life complicated even though it was my, my suggestion because the, the line jump over and get caught over a bolt so I think the easiest way to do is just throw the ball out let the line go deployed and then drop the anchor and the or would just come naturally above. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I think that would be easier okay. and only one thing to worry okay. at a time. What a difference a week or two makes. This is the anchorage that we came to last time we were down at Kekover and it was absolutely chock-a-block with yachts. There was just no room at the inn and today there's probably about a quarter of the amount of yachts here and uh, obviously we're getting to the end of the sailing season now so we've actually managed to drop our anchor in five meters of water and pull back into four meters of water so we'll spend the night here tonight uh, tomorrow we head back to cash and then friday we might go out to limonazi if the wind allows us and then saturday michelle has to head back to germany it's been a very quick week we've had a lot of fun and i've learned a lot about aircraft because michelle is a pilot he's a captain 
and look, we've actually deployed our anchor ball. I think Angie's just about to go and dive on that. Oh, we've got something really cool to show you. We certainly have. Iden, who fixed our engine when the turbo imploded on itself, we've said before he's a bit of a, a magical whiz. mechanical whiz. Yeah. And um, Angie's always concerned when she's operating the anchor about the anchor chain jumping off the windlass mm. gypsy. It's done it before and, and one time I couldn't stop it and you know it's so I have to go very slowly for the first say five to ten meters which you know in windy conditions when you're trying to get the anchor down quickly it's it's uh, a concern. So Kev, Iden fixed up some mechanical device to add to your windlass is that right? He did yes it seems to work well I'll show you. Okay well let's have a look at it in action so to yeah. speak. Very impressive, not a single little jump. So let me just explain what's going on here. Now originally Kev had 8 mil chain and he's upgraded to 10 mil chain and when he did that uh, Iden also made this new 10 mil gypsy for him. But still the chain had this tendency to want to jump off the gypsy and the reason why is because the chain comes straight up out of here and then instead of going at the angle it is now which curves over the gypsy and then underneath this this pulley, what it was doing was it was coming up through here over the top of the gypsy and leaving the gypsy at this point here and going straight to the anchor. So to fix that problem Iden's bolted on this dirty great big 316 stainless steel device with a great big pulley. Now as you can see the chain spends more time attached to the gypsy just by that small addition. So I think that is a brilliant solution. But the next challenge of course is bringing chain back up and it getting uh, piled up inside the locker. We're now going to sort of like over winter figure out a solution to that as well. So if anyone's got any ideas and traffic cones are obviously not the solution because A, here on Kev's boat you wouldn't fit a traffic cone and the chain in that locker and on our boat even though our anchor locker is much bigger the chain comes right in at the back of the locker and the traffic cone would just sit in the middle of the locker looking at the chain at the back going hello I see you <laughs> so solutions for anchor chain bunching up in anchor lockers big or small leave your comments in the suggestions down below cheers sunrise on Thursday and we are all up bright and breezy ready to head back to cash we've got to get back to cash by well before midday really because there's a bit of a blow coming down which will gust up to 35 knots right on the nose and it gets a little bit lumpy around cash so we're leaving at eight o'clock which will give us the three and a half four hours before the wind kicks in this is an absolutely lovely anchorage the holding is brilliant plenty of room to drop anchor and swing or if you want to drop anchor and tie back to the shore you can do that as well lots of boats are doing that there's our little anchor ball basic plan this morning is to let captain michelle take us out of here he's going to steer us through some narrow gaps and then get us clear of the kekover area and take us all the way back to cash Just a little postscript about the Victron Argo FET battery isolator that we installed. We now got the engine running at uh, 2000 RPM, so she's putting out the alternator, should be putting out a lot of juice. And if we have a look at our battery situation or what we can monitor the batteries here, uh, it's doing its job and everything is looking good, which was very much a different story when it, the old diode battery isolator wasn't actually doing its job, which you know, clued me in that there was an issue. Right now going into the house battery bank we've got 26 amps, 27 amps, which is probably what I would expect given the uh, 80 amp alternator that we have. And here we can see that the house batteries on the analog display are showing a really good uh, charge coming in and also now when we click over to the, the starter battery we see that that's also got a great charge coming in so really happy that that whole thing seems to have been ticked off the list in a very positive manner
ABC's having a bath, or should I say, power shower. Smile and wave, Baz, smile and wave. <laughs> How do you know that you're having a good time with someone? It's when time just seems to disappear and all of a sudden you realise you've been talking for five hours. Well, we've just had that moment here on board ABC. Uh, this is the final day for Michelle. He has to um, go back to Antalya Airport, which is a three hour drive away. So his plan was to leave at around about 11 o'clock. And we've just literally finished breakfast and started talking. And all of a sudden, and she went, oh, it's five minutes past 11. And he was like, oh, better get a move on. So here's some final words from Michelle on his uh, week long stay aboard ABC. How was your time on ABC? Super, super great. And it uh, was a wonderful adventure. And uh, Barry and Ansha, you were exactly like you were on the video. Friendly, welcoming. I mean, for me, it was a perfect, perfect week. OK. Yeah. What a wonderful experience to have our very first patron to come aboard. We had so much to share and talk about because, you know, that we all love sailing and uh, he's a similar age to us and so the whole thing was an absolutely wonderful experience so if you're a patron or you're thinking of becoming a patron and you'd like to spend some time with us learning about the liverboard life we would love to hear from you and while we're on the subject of patrons we'd just like to welcome aboard our latest patrons and that is kelly and jeff welcome aboard you two and welcome to our patron family Next week on Sailing ABC, we will be taking you to the Turkish Republic Day celebrations and we'll also go into detail about a little bit of a hiccup that's happened regarding the engine and the gaskets and taking bits and pieces apart. So join us for that if you can and remember if you enjoyed this video, give us a big thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe if you haven't already. Have a great week.